Hi everyone and welcome back to another Food and Fun Friday with another new recipe. We've got a cheeseburger macaroni and this would have been in yesterday's slideshow so I hope you got a chance to view it, make it, and sit down with me today while I eat it, give you my opinion, read some scriptures, and hopefully even tell you a story. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell underneath that so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Share around this channel to help it to grow. And definitely shoot me a thumbs up because it makes me smile, helps the channel to grow, and also lets me know that you guys are enjoying all of my videos. Stay tuned. Happy Friday, everyone. Great to see you and great to be back. Sorry I missed last week. I just was extremely busy and couldn't do some videos, but I'm back now with another new recipe, cheeseburger macaroni. I can't wait to try this. And um, you would have viewed it yesterday if you got a chance. It was in yesterday's slideshow, so I hope you did view it. If not, I'll link all the ingredients down in here. Now, I've done something similar to this, like a hamburger helper, but it was different. This is cheeseburger macaroni, like a macaroni and cheese with a uh, hamburger in it. So I'm very excited to try this. And I do one meal a day. So along with this, I'm having one slice of keto bread that I got from Aldi's. It's a uh, like a 12 grain. And then I've got um, like three stacks of celery with a serving of ranch dressing. I've got a two good strawberry yogurt with one strawberry cut up on it. I've got whipped cream to go on top of that. I've got one of my um, brownies. Uh, I, did a, I didn't do a recipe on this, but I just took through the uh, keto brownie mix. I've never done a video on those. I want to do one, but I did a brownie video a ways back, just my own recipe. And now you can actually buy the, you know, the package and just make your own at home. Um, so I did that for my church the other day. We had a ladies meeting and I made brownies, um, but I did them in cupcake version just so I wouldn't have to cut them and everything. But I've got um, butterscotch chips throughout it, pecans throughout it. And then on top for presentation, I've got some more uh, butterscotch and pecans just on top along with that uh, chocolate frosting. But it's a brownie just made into a cupcake and I'm letting it uh, um, warm up because it's been in the fridge. So I want it to warm up. But yeah, these are delicious, you guys. And it was just the um, Duncan Hines uh, brownie mix. And then I just added into the mixture some crushed up pecans and some of the um, uh, butterscotch uh, lily chocolate chips. So, and then on top, I frosted it with the birch benders, I believe it is, the frosting, the zero, uh, the keto zero carb, zero net carb frosting on top, the chocolate, and then I just added a little bit more, like I said, pecans and some of the um, butterscotch chips. And then I've got a new drink here. I've added this in yesterday's video, how to make it. It's a ap um, apple cider organic apple cider vinegar drink with um, lemonade and all of that. The ingredients are in it yesterday. It's so refreshing, so delicious, and will help you shed water, shed, you know, fluid, and it tastes so good. And I'm telling you, my dad can't stand vinegar. There's two, uh, like two, yeah, two tablespoons in mine. Um, sometimes I do three because I love the apple cider vinegar, but there's two tablespoons, ugh, can't talk, two tablespoons in this one, just so you guys know the recipe. But the night I made it, um, I had my dad try it, and my dad, no, does not like apple cider vinegar, and he loved this. He said it doesn't even taste like, it tastes like lemonade. He loved it. It's got fresh lemons in it and all that. Like I said, view yesterday's slideshow, because in the slideshow, I added this at the very end. I wanted to tell you guys about this. The drink is, you know, I'm sure you guys were going to see it in this video, so I just explained there that I did it in this, uh, you know, for this video. I mean, for this video. I put it in uh, yesterday's slideshow. At the very end, you'll get to see how to make this too. Great, you guys. Awesome. It's been making me pee like mad, and it's delicious. And it's got the apple cider vinegar in it. And I explained in there to make sure you do the one with the mother. It's called with the mother, the organic Briggs with the mother. Get that. And then it's got um, ginger in it, ground ginger. It's got lemons in it. 
It's got something called True Lemon. It's got a splash of lemon extract. It's got ice in it, water in it. It really helps you get your water. And let me tell you, I have been going to the bathroom like crazy, and I already do on keto. And then I've got a Earl Grey tea with MCT oil to give me extra fat because I eat the one meal a day and I'm in maintenance. And then I've got some uh, sugar-free hazelnut creamer. All right, don't wanna make these videos too long. I know I went over that one. Took me forever to do that, right? But first we're gonna read now our words of Jesus for women and then we'll eat. All right, today we are on a Jesus Freak. It's called Jesus Freak. John 15, 18. In the world, or if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. And I have told you guys that many times. You may have enemies. You may have people that hate you. But remember, they hated Jesus first. And Jesus walked this earth perfect. How could anybody have hated him? But they did. So remember John 15, 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Don't think you're always going to have everybody in the whole world to love you. You know, I hope I do. But no, I'm just kidding. All right. And it goes on to say, the people who hated Jesus the most were the religious leaders. He taught different... Oh, sorry. I'll start over. I was trying to take a breath, or I mean a uh, swallow. The people who hated Jesus the most were the religious leaders. He taught different things than they did, and he didn't keep the rules, um, and he didn't keep the rules they had themselves made up. Since they hated Jesus, it only made sense that they hated his followers too. That still happens today. People who are against God will be against his followers. Sometimes that's good, because you know they recognize you as being a being obedient to God. Your life might nudge their um, conscience to also show... Oh, let me read that part over. I'm sorry, I get blinded by that ring light. Your life might nudge their conscience to also follow him. Keep on doing what God wants you to do. He will take care of them. So always make sure that you understand that not everybody's going to love you. And especially when you are a Christian, if they don't walk with God, they're not going to want to walk with you. They're not going to want to be your friend. They're going to, you know, keep away they're going to probably keep away but like it says here but they may in their own conscience want to follow you because they see something different in you they see something that's different and it may help others to come to the lord i know that i brought many to the lord just by being around me even people that were was a friend of mine that was an atheist and after being around me for a while she just said i want to know about god like i just i watch you and you're just different i want to know about god so you will you know, bring people to the Lord and you'll have people that will shy away from you if you walk with the Lord. But don't stop doing what you're doing. It says, keep on doing what, you, what keep on doing what God wants you to do. He will take care of them because he will. That is what everybody calls the word karma. God will take care of the people that hate you. Don't hate them back. We're supposed to love thy enemy because like God said, it's easy to love, you know, the people that love you. It's harder to love somebody that doesn't. Love the people that don't, pray for them, want no harm against them, and let God take care of it. Let God be the ultimate judger and let him take care of it. And he will. Believe me, he will. So you just be yourself and love everyone. Let's be kind and loving and gentle and just sweet to everybody. You know, we live in such a hateful world. And I, you know, let's try to be, you know, the, the leader. Let's try to be a leader and show how to love many others. Because even Jesus was hated because of the way he preached and they didn't agree with it and they hated him. So you're going to have people that are going to hate you for all kinds of things in your life. Not just because you walk with God, but all, you know, all kinds of things in your life. You might have jealous people, you know, things like that. You're going to have people that hate you. But remember, don't hate them back. Love them and pray for them. The bottom says, have you experienced, um, have you experienced any level of, Sorry, ring light again. Have you experienced any level of uh, pers persecution? Sorry, there you go. Have you experienced any level of persecution from your faith? Have you taken a stand for God among your friends? Are you willing to be criticized or made fun of in order to stand strong for him? Absolutely. I will never walk away from God for anyone, not for anyone. And I will not not talk about God in front of people. Um, sometimes I know we get a little bit shy thinking, well, I just know that they don't believe in God, so I'm not going to talk about God. But I do somehow it gets in the conversation or I just, you know, do my own thing. But no, am I, if somebody asked me about God right then and there with somebody that was an atheist standing right there, never am I going to stop. I was friends with an atheist. I never stopped talking about God. And I love God. I love him and I will never turn from him. And no, 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 no. I will always stand strong for him. Stand strong for the Lord. Remember what Jesus did for us. God sent his son, his only son, to take on the sins of the world. And like I was telling my husband last night, think about it. We all should be hanging on a cross before we die for our sins. Not the Lord. Not the Lord who walked this earth perfect, who died for us 
And if we believe and we get baptized and, you know, we believe that he rose from the dead and um, recognize our sin and repent and, you know, do the things that the Bible asks us to do, we get our salvation. We get to go and walk streets of gold. We don't have to die on a cross. We should. We all should die of our sins. You know, I went to a ladies' meeting on Saturday, and that's what we talked about, how how we fit the criteria of, of, you know, there was a list of stuff in Revelations on, you know, who, you know, are the sinful people. Well, we somewhere fit in that category, you know. Um, of course, we're not a murderer and stuff like that, but we fit into that category. And she had asked, who here at the table should should go to hell? And we all said, all of us. Every one of us should go to hell, but we don't. We get eternal life. We get a gift. Jesus came to this earth not to not to destroy us, but to save us. To save us, he died for us. And all we got to do is believe and we get to heaven. But I mean, you got to repent and do all of that. But but isn't, isn't that amazing? He makes it so easy. I think that every one of us should have to bear our cross. Bear our cross and pick it up. It does say that in the Bible, but I think every one of us should have had to take the cross on, not him. I just, I still, to this day, get chills and can't believe that that love for us, that strong love for us that he did that for us. And it was the most excruciating pain anyone could go through. So love him back and be proud. Be loud, be proud. Roar like a lion. Roar like a lion. Let's be proud for the Lord and spread his good gospel to everybody. Start your day, go through your day, and end your day with Life's Manual, the Holy Bible. Read it, study it, and get a beautiful personal relationship with the Lord. And understand that this is how we're supposed to live. So blow off the dust and read it. And really get a great, you know, you know, a great walk with God. You're going to love what you're going to read. You're going to learn things like that. Again, you know how they hated Jesus. So when they hate you, don't think, why do they hate me? I try so hard. Don't worry about trying. Let God take care of it and just love them and read his beautiful book here. You're going to enjoy it. Challenge yourself to try to read the whole thing in like a year. You know, there are people that can do it in 30 days. If you read four hours a day, you can get this whole Bible done in 30 days. You can do the New Testament in 45 minutes a day in 30 days. So you know what? Challenge yourself to different things in, in your life, but make sure you, you do, you know, Read the Bible, pick it up and read. It's important. God wants us to do that for him. So let's do what we can to make him happy and spread his good word just like I'm doing here. All right. I can't wait to take a bite. I hope it's cool off now because it was pretty hot. It's probably really cold now. But anyways, um, when I made this, I realized when you melt Velveeta cheese, the second you eat, uh, it second it cools off, it gets hard. So I thought, I want to know what I can do to make it so it would be more liquidy. So I did decide in my head, on my own, came up with this recipe. I always do. I thought I'm going to add almond milk. I added a half a cup of almond milk to the whole recipe and a fourth cup of heavy cream. I knew the heavy cream was going to thicken it a little bit more because I knew I would have to do that with the almond milk. But the almond milk, now you see, it keeps it like macaroni and cheese with the beef. So yum. And these are the, um, the uh, shirataki noodles and they're the fettuccine ones. Oh my God, yum. Sorry, it was delicious the second it hit my mouth. Mmm. Wow. That does taste like macaroni and cheese with the beef. Oh my gosh, that tastes so good. It almost does taste like a hamburger helper, but more macaroni and cheese because it's so cheesy with that Velveeta. And then, of course, on top, I did melt some mozzarella cheese, a cup of that over the top. I'll show you one more up close view oh my gosh and i've got uh, pepper salt oregano and basil on it and it's perfect perfect and so creamy and cheesy yum mm. like i said down in this box i will have linked how to make this but it also if you want to just quickly see the um, slideshow i do a slideshow on thursdays of the recipe i'm going to eat on friday and it, it's a quick slideshow explaining how to make it so much easier just to view that. But if you forget anything, then you can just look down in the box box or down in this information box and it's all written out for you and how to make it. Super easy. Mm. And prep time, cook time was about 35 minutes. Um, putting it together, or, you know, cooking it. Basically, we'll say cook time was about 35 minutes because you want to let it sit at the end on low for a little bit, just bringing all the flavors together. Wow, this is good. Mm, mm, mm. So we'll try very hard to keep this video down. What am I at right now? Okay. Have some toast with that. Just so I make sure I get enough calories in my one meal. Because I do one meal a day. And I really try hard to do like 18 to 2,000 calories. With the MCT, of course the bread's high in fat. The butter on it. This is very high in fat with Velveeta cheese, heavy cream, ranch dressing. Of course that cupcake's going to be really high in fat. So yeah, I got a good fat here. The yogurt wouldn't be, but... I got enough fat here, enough fat and calories. 
Anyways, this drink right here, you guys, you have got to try this. One thing, like I said, is boy, does it get rid of fluid. I know you already do on keto. Keto is a diuretic way of life. But I'm going to the bathroom even more since I started doing this. And while well, I've even dropped a few pounds from drinking this because the apple cider vinegar will do that, will help you to lose weight. So if you're trying to lose more weight, try this drink and it's delicious, you guys. Like I said, my dad hates vinegar, hates vinegar, hates it. And when I told him it was vinegar, he was almost scared to try it, but he tried, he said, wow, it tastes just like lemonade. It's delicious. It's got the ice in it and I got this beautiful glass here from Walmart. It's got the straw in it that it doesn't come out because the rubber thing on it. And then you can just keep mixing it and drink it all night long. I just sip on it when I break my fast because it does have three carbs. The carbs in it is just the true lemon, which is a package almost like Crystal Light, but that this one, the true um, lemon is done with the stevia and that's the one we need to do. So I get the true lemon at Walmart and that has three carbs in it for a package. So there's the three carbs. So I don't drink this till I break my fast. Oh, it's so refreshing. You do not taste the vinegar. So I add a little bit more. I like three tablespoons because I like the taste of apple cider vinegar. So I add a little bit more and you can do either a teaspoon or a tablespoon. I showed you the recipe that they do a tablespoon of the ginger. And it, you, you, even, you taste a little ginger, you taste a little vinegar, but very little. You mostly taste because the lemon's in it, the true lemon in it, um, the stevia in it to sweeten a little bit and stuff like that. You really taste, it tastes like lemonade. That's what my dad said. And he drank it at the end of the night after it was watered down completely with the ice and everything. There was no ice left and everything. He still said it tastes like lemonade. Right now it's so fresh with the ice in it and everything. Mm. It is good. My husband loves it. I love it. So I wanted to share that if you guys want, you know, to try it. I wanted to share it in yesterday's slideshow. So I do the slideshow first and at the very end, I mentioned stay tuned. And then I come in with this, how to make this drink. I just didn't want to do two separate videos. So um, that's in there too. So I just make sure if you want to try this out, that that's what you have to buy and that and the ingredients and how to make it. And like I said, these glasses are four bucks at Walmart and they have the pink, blue, different ones. It's a giant mason jar. It's glass and perfect. And you're getting 32 ounces there. This is a 32 ounce container, I believe. So, yep, 32 ounces of a drink because even though you'll see in the recipe, it's one bottle of water I put in it, but with all the ice, filling with the ice, this thing is full to the top and it's a 32 ounce. So, and towards the end of the evening, I'll, I'll even add a little bit more water to it. Not water, sorry, more ice. Add more ice to it. That's what I meant to say. Because I don't want to, the ice already waters it down, but oh my God, I love the drink and it takes all night. And then I start going to the bathroom like crazy and I even go so much more through the night. But you guys, if you're not doing one meal, start it early during the day then because you will go to the bathroom a lot. That apple cider vinegar is so good for you. And it the benefits of apple cider vinegar, but remember, you want the organic Briggs apple cider vin vinegar with the mother. It says with the mother. Read the benefits on that for you. It's not just to help you lose weight. Read the benefits of it. I used to do apple cider vinegar, but I stopped for a while because um, I couldn't find a way to drink it because I was doing it just straight because I love the taste of it and I could just do two tablespoons really easy, but it starts to burn the throat. So my brother said, well, just do it in a little bit of warm water. And that was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. I, I just, I couldn't do it. So I stopped for a while, but then when somebody, I saw this at church, a couple of my uh, lady friends at church were drinking this and I'm like, what are you drinking? That looks so refreshing. And I know that they do... Um, keto and another form i can't remember what the other lady's doing but they all drink this drink and i said what is it because i want i want you to share the recipe with me because it looks delicious and i want it i knew it would be something i could drink and mm, absolutely delicious you guys oh i love it it's so refreshing like i said don't be afraid try it and if you don't like as much vinegar then just do a tablespoon of vinegar you're still getting it in there but at least two the recipe calls for two. Some people add more, but you don't, I'm serious. You just don't taste it. And my dad, he hates vinegar and loved it. He said he could drink that every day. And he's very fussy. Let me tell you, that man is very fussy when it comes to stuff. But I've gotten him to try so many of my stuff and he loves a lot of my stuff. Mm, mm, mm. This is so cheesy and good. Now remember, these are these uh, shirataki noodles. I know a lot of you out there say, I hate those noodles. They're gross. They taste funny. I explained in the video, because you have to rinse them under cold water for three straight minutes, running your fingers through that strainer, 
really getting all the smell off because they come in a liquid and it smells like fish when you take it out. So yeah, it gives you that icky taste or whatever, that, that smell, and then you taste it. But if you rinse them for three minutes using your fingers, I, of course, do just a quick video of it, but I kept going for three minutes, um, rinsing it really good, and then you don't boil them. You just throw them into anything that you're cooking, throw it in just for a couple minutes and let it cook. You don't taste it. It does remind you that you are eating noodles. And if you've still done all that, you still won't like it, well, sorry. Then you won't be able to have this meal. You could probably have it with just the hamburger and the cheese and stuff. You just wouldn't have the noodles. So, where am I at? I don't know what story to tell you guys. I didn't come up with one. I told you, so that's why I said in the intro, possibly a story. There's some of my celery here. I am ready for church. I'm wearing that dress. I, I've done a video with this already, an outfit of the day. I did like a salsa one, like salsa dancing, but I'll stand up and just show you quick for those of you if you didn't get the chance to see it. It's really cute and flowy, and I spun in the video in slow-mo. It goes way up um, when you spin, but it's got a piece underneath it that stays down. This is straight to the leg. So I love that. So it is made for like salsa dancing and stuff because it really twirls. I mean, it's a heavy dress. Very, very heavy. I love it. I can't remember where I got it. I think I got it from a Goodwill. But it's a name brand. It's a really good brand. If you want, find this video. You'll see it. It's this purple color dress. Find that video and then it says in the information box where I got it. But yeah, we're heading to church tonight. So, just get my video done. Still have the eyelashes on. And now we are like a day shy of two weeks. And everyone is still on. They still look really good. I'll give you a little peek. I have nothing on them but just eyeliner. I just have eyeliner on my eye. But I have no mascara on or nothing. I kind of sometimes do. But I don't have any mascara on. Look at how beautiful they are two weeks later. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Oh, I love them. And I'll look down so you can see. I just have eyeliner on. That's it. But, oh, I love these lashes. I love them. And I haven't lost any yet. Well, it doesn't look like I have. I haven't seen any fall out yet. But, yeah, I'm almost like a day shy of the two-week mark. And they say they last three weeks. I'm not thinking in one week they're going to start falling out. But they say about three weeks, some people can get a little longer on them. I'm very careful with them. And I keep them very clean, especially if I do put mascara on them. I've only done the mascara a couple times. You don't really need the mascara. Um, they say that's really, when they start to thin out a little bit, then you're adding the mascara just to fill them in until you can get another set. Um, but I, I've done it, but I just use a brush, a um, one of those soft, uh, like, you know, one that would be in mascara, um, the, the, the wand. I use that and I just, I use the makeup remover and I just run through them like that and I brush it out and I brush all the makeup out of it. So I keep them very clean, but you just want to be careful because you don't want to get them wet. So that's why I just go through that. I don't go up to the um, the glue line. And I don't put the makeup up to the glue line. Of course, the eyeliner is close to it, but I use a, a makeup remover, a liquid makeup re uh, remover, Neutrogena from Walmart, and, I, and a Q-tip, and I just go across that line to get it off. So, but yeah, that's all I have on tonight is just eyeliner, and that's it. Nothing else, no foundation, no nothing. Just the liquid eyeliner and um, uh, and then the liner underneath. And that that's it. I didn't even do the eyelashes or anything this time because you just don't need it. Like I said, you don't. But I for one of my videos, I did do a little bit just to make them a little bit bolder. I'm enjoying these and I'm definitely going to have some fun with them. But yeah, I can't think of a story to tell you guys. I know there's lots of them. If I miss one this week, I apologize. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure.
I can tell you a really quick one of uh, how rude people can be sometimes, but still love them. When we were younger, we were, um, my mom would make Christmas wreaths and, um, sorry, trying to swallow, would make Christmas wreaths um, out of plastic around a coat hanger and stuff. She learned when she was a kid in school. When she got older, she made them and we would sell them. We'd go around and sell them, you know, to help out with Christmas and stuff like that. And, um, with, you know, for the holidays and all that, just do a project. And they were so beautiful. People loved them. And so we'd sell them. I told my mom she should make them and try to sell them. So us kids, when we were younger, would go around and sell them. And people were so kind and so nice. And then she started making them with lights on them and they'd let us light it up and they just love it. It lasts a lifetime, you guys, a lifetime because it's made of plastic. You can spray them with a spray or you can just leave them with the clear plastic. Some people like the black plastic. Some people like the black ones. They really do. Or the clear ones, just the clear plastic without the spray or the black one, like a black wreath. They really like it. They're beautiful, especially like with a purple bow and purple lights for Halloween or orange. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. I'll have to, I'll have to show you guys that sometime. I'll have to make one. Maybe do a DIU for you guys of a uh, a wreath that can be done, you know, for, like I said, black for the holidays, for um, Halloween. Um, some people still liked it for Christmas, the red and the red lights on it and stuff, but I'll show you that sometime. Because there is a technique to it. But anyways, we were walking around. It's really cold and, you know, we're, we're walking around and my dad would always park about five houses away. Wait for us to get to him, then he'd go five houses ahead. And that way, if we needed to get any from him, we'd have, I'd have two, my brother would have two, and we saw him, we can get to the car and get more. And everybody was always so nice. Some people would just say, no, we don't really need the wreath, but you know, we'd like to help your family out, and they'd give us money anyways for it, and they were just really nice people. But anyways, we got to one house, and this was so funny. We thought for sure we were going to sell this house. All done. They really thought for sure, 100%. We're selling a wreath here because this place was decked out for Christmas. Just decked out. It was gorgeous. I swear they had 50 billion lights. It was just beautiful. It was one of the most prettiest houses, you know, on the block there. And a lot of people decorated a lot there. But these people were outdid themselves. So they had the big blow up Santas with the air machine in them. They had the big, the globe the giant snow globe with the snow floating it. So they, they were running a lot of electricity. So they had to have had a lot of money. But um, anyways, I want to turn this around. I don't want that chocolate to get on me. Um, so anyways, we're like, we're going to sell here for sure. Probably a couple of them because they just love Christmas. Well, they come outside and first off, and we're just shivering outside. You know, it's, it's pretty cold or whatever. A lot of people would, you know, offer us to go in. Are you leaving? I'm just I love you. <laughs> That's my husband. He's just having to do something. Um. But anyways, so we thought for sure. We're selling a wreath here for sure. Like I said. And when they come to the door, we're just freezing. And most people would let us come into the doorway, you know, and just warm up while we explain what we're doing, you know, selling the wreath. And these people didn't let us come in. They were as rude as can be. They were so mean and rude. And mind you, we're just little kids. No, no, Minnie. She's crying because daddy left. Um, I mean, we're little kids, you guys. I was 10, I think. My brother was eight. Or seven. Really young kids. And we're just, you know, trying to sell wreaths. We're just trying to sell these. My mom and dad make them and we try to make them for the holidays to help out with Christmas for our family. So we're not trying to ask for money. We're making a project and trying to sell it to help out with Christmas. But anyways, they were really rude. And they're like, how much are they? Or whatever. They're like, I think at the time they were $12 or something. And they're like, oh my gosh, I don't have $12. They're like, oh my gosh, like, can't you see? How much stuff we already have, and they started yelling, and they're like, "We're we're just as poor as you guys." 
They're like, because, you know, I said, because we had to explain our family was poor. My dad was out of work at the time. And that was, a, a, you know, the truth. My dad was out of work and um, some having some health issues. He's the one that passed away. And so my mom would make these wreaths and we tried to make some money for the holidays. We explained the situation like that. And they said, well, we're really poor too. Really, really poor. You know, we don't have money to try to help your family. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do for Christmas. Really? I'm 10 years old and I'm looking around at all these lights. And I thought about it years later, but I'm looking at all these lights again. How could they be poor with all these lights? Because I, I would know as a child, we couldn't have a lot of lights up and stuff because it took a lot of electricity. I remember my parents saying, shut those stuff off to save money. I'm not kidding you guys. If I counted the lights that were there, and was, I mean, these great big giant snow globes, I mean, that are like, you know, 10 feet tall, 20 feet tall. I mean, the stuff they have is unbelievable. They're like, we're just as poor as you guys. First off, they lived in the richest neighborhood ever. They had the biggest house on the block and it was decorated the most. It's just sad when people say stuff like that. You know, we're just as poor as you guys. We're trying to figure out how to make ends meet. And as I got older, I thought in my head, I would love to go back to the house and say, hey, I know how you can make ends meet. Shut all these lights off because this has got to be costing you thousands, <laughs> thousands of dollars. But as a kid, even a kid, I'm thinking, you know, the lights. And I might have even said, um, no, I didn't say anything because I wasn't rude. I even knew at 10. I was very mature at 10. But I said it to my dad in the car. I'm like, they had all these lights and they said that they were so poor. I wonder why they don't shut all their lights off. You know, why they have so many lights going because that's taking a lot of money, dad, right? Because, you know, electricity goes, well, yeah, it would take a lot. But come on, you know, that's just sad to say that we're just as poor as you. We're actually trying to take up a donation ourselves to try to get some money. We're so poor. I couldn't believe they even said that. Probably because I was 10 or 11. Probably figured, you know, make me feel bad for them so that they don't have to feel so bad. Not to give us anything. But they just sounded funny, too. You know, just mean. They were mean. Not mean because they didn't buy it. Just, you know, we're very friendly. My video is getting up there. So let's just take a couple bites of this. I will finish this out, right? But the video is already over 30 minutes. I, I just can't do it, you guys. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I'm just going to have to face the fact that these videos are going to be at least 30 to 35 minutes long. Mmm. Strawberry with strawberries. Mmm, mmm, mmm. We'll try our chocolate brownie quick with you guys. I hate these ones. I bought these at Walmart. They're really cheap. I didn't realize that they were going to be so bad. The paper for it are really bad. It, it wants to stick to it, you know, so, but I suppose I, I end up getting them off. It's just that they're really bad, really, really bad. So spend a little bit more. I think I paid 99 cents for these. Spend a little bit more <laughs> so they don't have to do it. But there you go. There it is right there. We're going to take a bite and I'll show you the inside. Hmm. I feel like I have with this brassing it just gets everywhere. But anyways, it's crumbling a little bit. But that's the inside. It's got the butterscotch chips on the inside and the pecans. Mm -mm -mm. So this one's going to be a sloppy one. I'm going to need a fork. And because normally I eat them cold. So they stay together. But this I let soften because I just wanted to really eat it easier. So I'm going to finish that off so I can use my fork. Because I don't want to get messed up for church. And I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but anyways, it was great to see all of you guys. Great to be back in. I start, and Like I said, I'm sorry I missed last week. Um, but anyways, I just am happy to be back. Definitely try out that cheeseburger macaroni. It was delicious, super easy to make. And you're going to love it. Your kids will love it too. Like I always say, your kids will love things too. Let them try it too. Get them on a low carb. Oh, that whole pan too was, um, what was it? 20, I think 21 carbs for the whole pan serves four people. So it was like, or 20 carbs, I think. Oh, it was 20 carbs. 20 carbs for the whole pan. So, and it serves four people. So it's five net carbs for the, uh, for a plate of that. Five carbs, that's it. And everything I had here equaled out to 21 carbs. 20 is what we're supposed to stick at, but it was 21. I'm not worried about one carb, especially in maintenance. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I missed you. And I'm glad that I got to tell a little bit of a, excuse me, a little bit of a story there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And 
I hope to get up a treat video this weekend for you guys as well. Thank you guys for all your views and comments and help with my channel. Gosh, I hate when I talk and eat because then I burp a lot. Um, but just so I want to thank you guys for all that. Please continue to keep me in your prayers. I will continue to pray for you and your family. And if you could pray for mine and my family. And a good friend of mine lost another uh, family member. If you could just pray for peace for her. She lost four people in like the last three weeks. This is so much on her plate. Um, if you could pray for her. Her name is Karen. If you could pray for her, I'd appreciate it. Um, and other than that, I love all of you guys very much. Try this drink too. You're going to love it. Especially if you want to drop some extra weight. Apple cider vinegar is very good for you. And it tastes like lemonade though. Even... Even little kids at the church drink their parents. There's a little baby. She's not quite two, heading on two. She drinks it all, constantly is drinking their drink. And she's like two years old and she loves it. So if she loves it, you guys are going to love it. You just don't taste the stuff in it. I love all of you guys very much. Everybody take care. God bless. And I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload. And remember, if they hate you, they hated Jesus first. Love them. Be kind, be loving to everyone. We'll see you in my next upload.